This week on Dance of Joy, we talk about hammer pants, giant sofas, and the healing power of parsley. All that and more as we watch season six, episode four of our favorite 80s hit sitcom, Perfect Strangers. Hello and welcome to Dance of Joy, a Perfect Strangers rewatch podcast. My name is Imran. I'm host cousin number one. Joining me is my sister, host cousin number two, Sophia. Hello. How's it going, sister? It's going well. You know what? You know how we just, we've mentioned now for a few weeks that we just cleared out our our childhood home yeah, of 37 years. It's, it's done. finally done. The house is sold. But we each took like a bunch of boxes of all of our old stuff, right? Yeah. And I was looking through mine and I found some work of mine like a million years ago when I was like 19, 20 years old. I worked as a journalist in Lexington, Kentucky. Oh, yeah, I remember For that. the Lexington Herald Leader in the pre-derby season. And I had to um, cover all these like fancy horse auctions at these fancy horse, horse auctions. auctions. And I went to all these horse farms and I wrote about horses. This was your beat. This was your, your I, reporter beat. I was beat. just like. You're the horse girl. I was the horse girl. And I read these stories and I was like, what is this? Did I write this? Because it was all this horse terminology about like the breeds and the maternal line and oh the paternal God, line. Oh my God, like the sires and the yeah, mares. I, you were actually I knew writing it all. And I was horses. reporting on these well, auctions you know? where these like Gulf Air would pay like millions of dollars in Kentucky okay, to buy these horses. That's good that you know how much a, a racehorse costs because yeah. I'm going to need to know that because specifically ties into this episode of Perfect Strangers. Yes, it we, does. We are at season six, episode four, titled A, a horse, horse is, is a, a horse. horse. Of course, of course. Of course. Of course. No, that's and not in the title. But yeah, that is a, what is that line that make you think of? That is the opening line of the theme song from an old show called Mr. Ed. That's right. Which was about a talking horse. Classic black and white sitcom. Yeah. Ran from 1961 to 66. So we're talking pre-color TV. We watched some Mr. Ed. I remember reruns. watching Mr. Ed yeah. and it is charming. Why is that the Wilbur. title of this? Oh, Wilbur. Because. Why is that the title of this episode? This episode, as described in the TV guide, was Larry and Balky buy a racehorse, unaware that the equine is on its last leg. Oh, equine. Good word. Equestrians. <laughs> Equinations. They uh, buy a racehorse. We got Bronson Pinchot as Balky, Marklin Baker as Larry, Melanie Wilson as Jennifer Lyons, Rebecca Arthur as Marianne, the snarky Belita Moreno as Lydia. And the even snarkier Sam Anderson. As Sam Gorbley and some guest cast, including, uh, yeah, you guessed it, a uh, spoilers, a horse. A horse. A horse has a name. This episode aired on October 19th, 1990. You can binge along all episodes of uh, Perfect Strangers with us, listener. They're all streaming on Amazon Freebie, all eight seasons. Watch along with us. It's a lot of fun. We still have quite a bit to go, so That's we're right. only in the beginning of season six. <laughs> And we're in the beginning of this episode uh, where we are in the basement of the Chicago Chronicle, of course, the boys' workplace. And Larry's like rushing in and he bumps and he's got his face buried in a newspaper, folded up newspaper in his hand. And he bumps into Mr. Gorpley, who has just come out of the uh, elevator. And Gorpley's mad. He's like, watch it, Appleton. Uh, he said, you almost had a very expensive lawsuit on your hands. Is he ri like he's always trying to get rich? Like yeah, that. he's just a scammer, he's right? Like any, a any scam he can think of. I love this though because Larry literally slams into Gorpley with the plot. Yeah, the episode. He says, "I'm just, I'm sorry, I'm just excited. I just bought a racehorse." What? Okay, there you go. There's the premise. Right there in the thirty Larry seconds. A racehorse. He's like, "We're at. I bought a racehorse. Wonderful." Sam wants to know where he got the money. To buy the racehorse, apparently uh, not a problem. Uh, the horse only cost twenty two hundred dollars. Is that a good? Is that a deal for a racehorse? It's pretty. It's pretty cheap. If you said this uh, Arab dudes are buying millions, millions of dollars, multiple twenty two hundred dollars. And Gorbley, of course, doesn't believe him and goes, "Oh, I get it. It's stuffed." <laughs> oh, like a stuffed horse. Yes, like it's a not animal. a real horse. 
And Larry says, no, it, the reason it's so cheap is because the guy who sold it to him was going through a messy divorce. Ooh. And he's got to liquidate all his assets so his wife won't get her hands on anything. Oh, way to capitalize on the guy's divorce there, Larry. I like it. Yeah, that's icky. Gor- then- Gorbley, though, has had some experience with this and just tells Larry it won't work. They find everything. Tell him he can kiss his assets. Goodbye. Assets. I like that wordplay. Word Tell play. him he can kiss his kiss assets. assets. That's Goodbye. what he's talking about. His assets, his stuff. And then the oh. most brilliant thing of October 1990 happens. Yes. Larry uh, is like still thinking about this horse and we pan out and we see at the top of the stairs, Balky. And he's got this like broad shouldered jacket, multicolored. But it's still Miposian, right? Miposian, it's got, but like, it has like these Miposian shoulder pads. But they're shoulder pads, very 80s and very specific kind of pants. And parachute these pants. These are called a parachute pants. So you'll find out why right now. And he comes to the top of the stairs and the camera focuses on him and he just busts out with, you can't touch this. Of Don't course, know, that is touch the, and the he starts classic dancing MC down Hammer the song. stairs. Yes, and you can't touch this. MC Hammer, 1990. Yes, and then at the like raised landing, he goes stop, hammer time. I mean, and then this he dances is, yes. the rest of the way <laughs> down the, the stairs. Yeah. <laughs> and Larry's like Balky, Balky, I gotta tell you something, Balky, Balky, and Balky just keeps dancing <laughs> this MC Hammer dance, and. Larry's like, I got to tell you something. And he and Balky keeps dancing. And then they do this beautiful thing they've done before where Larry just joins in and they do a choreographed MC Hammer, the MC Hammer dance. Yeah, they're doing MC Hammer this footwork. Song. Yes, from the video. And it's pretty brilliant. And they do a couple of verses, right? Like Every time you see me, the hammer's yeah. just so hyped. I'm dope on the floor and I'm magic they do the, on the yes, mic. They do that whole now, why would I ever stop doing this when others making records that just don't hit? I put around, around the world, world from, from London, London to the Bay. The it's it's hammer, 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 hammer. The rest can uh, go and play. Can you touch this? Boom, boom, and then they stop. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. Oh, it's uh, brilliant. It's so much What fun. year did that song so, come out? You know why I love this? Uh, let me tell you. I I was kind of, I kind of love this song. It was, I remember all of this. I was in the hip hop, uh, you know, from yep. like 1989 yep. on. And this is a great dance scene. So those pants, of course, uh, the hammer pants at the time were huge. Did you ever have any hammer pants? I never did. I wanted them. But <laughs> in 1990, the summer, uh, MC Hammer was giant. You can't touch this. Uh, he put out third single from his album. Please hammer, don't hurt him. Remember yeah. that album yep. from uh, nineteen ninety? He had it on a cassette, probably. Uh, so also, it famously features the Rick James sample, uh, and he gets co-writing credit of the music he uses, right from Super yeah. Freak. It's the Super Freak sample, which is huge. But this was it won the Grammy Award for best R and B song in nineteen ninety one. It won the best award for best rap solo performance, which was a new category, and it was the first rap song to be nominated for a Grammy Award for Record of the Year at the 33rd Annual Grammy Awards in 1991. This video was all over the place. I remember it was on MTV all the time. He goes on to sell, between uh, the U.S. and the U.K., over 1 million copies of that album. Went gold in both countries. He was so big, there was a Saturday morning cartoon. I remember About him? Yes, it was the MC Hammer Saturday morning cartoon. Oh, wow. And he's also famously not good with his money as... By 1996, he has a very publicized uh, bankruptcy. bankruptcy. He declares bankruptcy by 96. And then cut to like early 2000s. You see him doing infomercials, late uh, night and weird things. I think he's he doing better. Now? I think he's better now. And he's kind of. But the, the thing was, at the time, the other rappers, like they totally hated him because they called him a pop sellout when right. like gangster rap was huge and like gritty, dirty Real rap and like it, I see both sides. I love Vanilla Ice also. Yeah, but I was into like the Public Enemy and stuff at the same time. Yeah, but he honestly he did a lot. He made hip hop so big that that year, like uh, uh, he did a lot for hip hop, even though it was yeah. just uh, produced and poppy and glamour. I don't know. It was still a fun song. It's a party what song. What were his other big hits? Uh, the other hit, Too Legit to Quit. Too, Too legit. legit. Too Legit to Quit. That was on the next oh, wow. album and. Uh, the that was kind of it. We had uh, there was that song. There was a slow song on that album. All right. 
uh, you can't touch this, changed his life, and then he ends up going bankrupt. So I, but also look how huge it was. It made a syndicated family sitcom. Like that's how big this song got that the writers put it in. Yeah, it was a huge song and it made it into. Isn't that, t- I mean, that's saying perfect. something like that's how big it was that the writers were like, we're going to put all the verses and in we're gonna this. Make and they them, know, we're going to make them teach them, them the actual choreography from, Is this this, a from fore- the video. Foreshadowing of Balky B, perhaps. Maybe. Because Bronson was having a great time doing this. Yes. But even Larry was so good. Mark yeah, Baker was so good at this. Right and Larry's not wearing parachute pants, but he's wearing very early 90s sort of like Lots ple- of pleats pleated on off Larry's his pants, pants that a, look yes. almost tapered. And then it just draws attention to his tiny little feet in, yes, and then it tapers those shoes. Yeah. But the pleats are very, I remember the pleats. You don't yeah. see that anymore. All right. So they finish the <laughs> dance and the choreography. The audience goes wild. And... Then Larry remembers what he was trying to tell him. He's like, Balky, I bought a horse. <laughs> Balky goes, get, get out, out of the city. <laughs> he said it was fate. It was meant to be. The horse's name is Larry's Fortune. Oh, boy. Of course it is. Okay. Well, I could see why he would buy it. And Balky congratulates him on owning a horse. Ah, uh, But he doesn't own it quite yet. He explains he only gave the guy half the money, and he, unless he gives him the other half, He's going to lose the first half. So he goes, so what do you say, buddy? Uh, and Balky goes, I'd say you're talking pretty fast. Uh, trying to slow him down. <laughs> but, and Larry asks him, how would you like to be the co-owner of Larry's fortune? And Balky, this is so funny what he says. He says, I would love to own a horse again. <laughs> and he tells Larry that he had a horse on Meepo. Of course he did. And the horse's name was Trotsky. <laughs> Trotsky. And because horses trot. And he raised him from when he was a baby. And he said Trotsky could plow 40 acres in half a day. That Trotsky could work like a horse. <laughs> of course, he is a horse. And, and he still had energy left over for fun. And he says, one day I started giving rides to the little children on his back. My back was out that day. <laughs> <laughs> and Larry's like, buggy, baggy, baby, buddy, 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 buddy baby. baby. He goes, why don't you, uh, why don't we talk about your horse another time? Let's talk about our horse. He goes, are you in? Meaning the horse, but Balky does not know what he's talking about. He goes, well, you know, I try to kind of be fresh, fresh kind of happening, kind, kind of in. in. <laughs> and Larry goes, no, he goes, I mean, are you with me? And Balky, again, not getting it, goes, of course I'm with you, cousin. And he puts his arm around yeah. him. He says, no, I mean, are you going to buy the damn horse? <laughs> Balky goes, yeah, he's, he's in. Uh, and he says, uh, and Larry is pleased. And Balky goes, okay, cousin, now all we need to do is buy a field and plow so the horse will have something to do. <laughs> he says, you know what they say, idle hooves are the devil's playground. Uh-huh. It's hands. supposed to be yeah. idle hands. But I guess in the horse world hooves. it works too. Uh, but Larry uh, corrects Bucky, says, Bucky, this is not a farm horse. This is a race horse. One of the fastest creatures on earth. We are going to race him. And Bucky says, cousin, give me a line of credit. Meaning <laughs> give me some credit. Yes. We could never run faster than a horse. Uh-huh. He thought they were going to race oh, him. Literal Balky. said, we are yes. going to race him. Is it me or was the steam <laughs> rising from? Are you asking, asking me? It- <laughs> uh, so it's the old literal Balky is back. You know. Anyway, this one doesn't even get explained on no. camera. No. We fade to the next uh, scene. And now we're at the racetrack. Yeah, this is actually a shot of an actual place, Arlington Racetrack in Arlington Heights, Illinois. Hmm. Uh, It opened in 1927, and I've been there a few times with work. It's kind of fun to bet on the ponies. Your work bucks, goes on death. gambling trips. Yeah, well, you don't have to gamble, but oh, yeah. like, uh, there's bands and there's like food oh, and drink, and oh. but the horses are there. You can just watch them race. But and it's a we- like learning how to bet horses is weird because there's like box and trifecta, and you got to you can pick who comes in first, second, third, or oh, you can wow. pick all these crazy things. I never, I just bet a few bucks. It was fun, right? but but here's an update. This place was open just until September 29, 2021. Oh, no. Why? Because the Chicago Bears football team has uh, had reached an agreement with Arlington to purchase that whole property, the racetrack and its surroundings. what? They're going to train They're there? going to build an arena and a training facility facility and a little like Bears campus. Oh, right no there more racetrack? And track? play there. Yes. I guess they're tearing down the racetrack. The sale was finalized mm. February of this year. It was like a huge deal. It's a big deal. They're moving from Soldier Field mm. and the Hallis Hall, and they're moving everything. I guess they're ripping down the racetrack and building on top. 
Make a whole little bear city over there. So Bear city. So you could have gone there still. There was a lot of activities and events. Mm. Fun place. Anyways, we're yes. at Arlington Racetrack, and Larry is dressed all weird for some reason now that he owns he a racehorse. He is dressed like what I imagine <laughs> horse racing people. At the derby? At the people who yeah, saw derby, the Conturbie Derby? Dressed, they all, they have I didn't see the things, derby. Right? I worked in the pre-derby season, okay. and then I was gone for the derby, but... Yeah, he is wearing an ascot. An ascot and a hat and ascot a jacket. Ascot is like those. It's like a scar- yeah, scarf. Yeah, scarf inside your shirt yeah. for some reason. And like a little fedora, which looks ridiculous because all fedoras look ridiculous. And Sam and Lydia are there and Marianne and Jennifer are there. And like the girls are wearing little dresses yeah. appropriate for a horse race. Yeah. Uh, and Marianne's funny because she's looking, she's standing with a pair of binoculars looking through the wrong end of the binoculars. Remember when you used to do that and things did look far away? <laughs> far away. She's like, oh, gee, when you look through this, everything looks so far away. I did that when I was like eight. Uh, so, <laughs> And then uh, we cut to Lydia and Mr. Gorpley. Gorpley's like, oh, what a beautiful day. It's perfect. The sun is shining. The birds are singing. Appleton's going to lose his shirt. Life is good. Meaning Larry's going to lose. Lose He's a lot of money. Yeah. Him losing. Uh, and then we cut back to Jennifer and Larry. And Jennifer's like, Larry, there's something that's been bothering me. And then <laughs> Larry goes, what is it, kitten? kitten. I'm like, what? what? You never called her kitten, kitten before. Yeah. And she's like, she gives him a look. Even and she's, she's like, like, what? <laughs> yeah. But then she lets it go. And she goes, you think it was a good idea to use our honeymoon money to buy oh. this horse? Okay. And Larry goes, kitten, kitten, kitten. All condescendingly, right? Yeah. He goes, Ex- if, excuse me, when Larry Sporchard wins this race, we'll be able to go anywhere you want. And Jennifer has a solid argument. She goes, well, I wish you discussed it with me first. And then she goes, and Larry, Larry. don't call me kid. She don't like the kid. And Larry goes, you're right. From now on, we'll discuss every major step together. Cupcake. And then Ew. he just calls her cupcake. Ew. What a jerk. What are you doing, Larry? And she, she gives him another <laughs> weird look. Like- like- why just drop the nicknames it's not working Lair. yeah but i don't know okay. what is it about the race the you got to be this person horse track you gotta that be makes them start calling yes these names. you got to be this person at the horse track. A horse person it's a horse person um about, so then we zoom out again marianne's still like looking at the wrong way in the binoculars and balky comes down and stands right in front of her in front of the binoculars and she like waves at him, calls at him as if he's at a distance. She's like, Balky, over here. And then she lowers the binoculars and like does a little jump. Oh, you're right here. Oh, it's right in front of her. It's a very cute little scene. And they take their seats next to Larry and Jennifer. And Balky has just come from like grooming the horse or whatever. And he tells Larry, you don't have anything to worry about. Cousin Larry's fortune is ready for the race. Oh, good. He said he was a little nervous at first, but he calmed down right when I sang Don Cushan to him. <laughs> and cousin, you're not going to believe this, but the man riding him is even shorter than you. Uh, uh, it's good. It's good. Then we hear the trumpet, the classic trumpet start of the race song. Dun, 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 dun. And then the announcers like the horses are on the track. It's about to start. Everyone takes out their binoculars and looks at the same direction. And Balky has like a little mini telescope thing yeah, with he's got Miposian a Miposian telescope tassels yeah, and stuff yeah. hanging off him. Yes, Balky combed his mane himself. He tells them, uh, and then I like this slide. He goes, I tried to give him a ponytail, but it seemed redundant. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone's like, he's beautiful. It's a beautiful looking horse. Uh, the race is about to start. It's the fourth race and Larry's getting hype. He's like, this is it, Jennifer. Just start thinking about where you want to spend our honeymoon. Wait, before we go on, I wondered this whole episode, like, how is he so confident like he he got this horse how did he know it was a winner on sale yeah. like why would he what gave him so much confidence that the horse is the a odds winner would tell you fast. but they don't tell us the odds of they, this we first don't race. hear that yeah he just thinks this is the fastest horse and he got the best deal because it's larry but and there's i feel like there was like something that didn't make it or like was some written kind of into promise earlier was made, script maybe for like some reason why he would have so much confidence that this yeah it is weird half the discount horse that he bought is like a winner, you know. Is the horse a winner? Let's find well, out. Larry seems to think so. Yes. And the race starts, and we see this like I don't know, like video of horses. Yeah, it's horse racing footage. Horse it's raining. It's footage. Film yeah. Versus like broadcast TV yeah. quality, right? 
so like the whole gang, Larry, Balky, Jennifer, Marianne, Lydia, and Gorpley are like trying what you see them like looking the same direction with their binoculars. They're watching the race. They just keep turning and they're like, where's tracking Larry's? the horses to the yeah, one side. And so they're in the, their, their binoculars are aimed at the horses in the lead. And yeah. someone's like, where's Larry's fortune? And then they slowly move backward <laughs> in, in unison. Then they move back <laughs> again. In unison. Then they move back a third time <laughs> to the back. And Balky's like, there he is. <laughs> and Larry's like, what? Why is he all the way back there? What's he doing back there? And Gorpley's like, it looks like walking to me. He's like <laughs> reveling in Larry's loss. And Balky's just excited about how handsome the horse looks. And he's like, he's not sweating and breathing hard at all like the other horses. <laughs> That's the problem. And Larry's like, but he's all the way back there. And Gorpley's like. Gorbley starts cheering for another he says horse. He's in the fifty front. lengths behind, yeah. which is like a really far back, yeah, yeah. I believe. Uh, but the race ends, and that's Gorbley's horse, Harris Ranch, who he was rooting for. He wins. Gorbley wins. Yeah. Gorbley's happy. He goes, "Way to go! I won. What a surprise!" He goes, "Well, gee, I'll just go collect my winnings. It's really a shame they wouldn't let me bet on the horse that was going to finish last. I had that right too." Uh-huh. He hits Larry on the arm. Another uh-huh. jab. What? I mean, yeah, he just loves uh, sticking it, sticking it. Uh, and then Lydia goes to Marianne. She goes, I got to go, too. I got lucky. And Marianne's like, did you pick a winner? And she goes, I sure did. And that's him right over there. And she points to this over there. And they cut to this guy. It's like old who man. Looks like a low rent Tony Bennett. Yeah. Look-alike. Yeah. And it's old, with gray and curly like hair. Old and, and he's just and he just like grins and waves. That's, <laughs> this whole thing is like they just paint Lydia as this yes. like. Man oh, thirsty. Yes. I don't know. She's this cougar she mama. Rich, I don't know. Not cougar. Not cougar. That guy's old. Got more that of a gold digger. Maybe if he's him. rich, yeah. she, she thinks she's the first one. But that dude looked like a uh, wannabe Tony And like, Bennett. why was that line even necessary in this story? I don't uh, know. I don't know. Okay. So Larry's like, I... He's like, I don't know what when, what happened. I can't believe this. I could have run faster than that. Balky just looks at him and goes, I don't think so. <laughs> at least not with a man on your back. <laughs> no way. And Marianne was like, Larry's like just complaining because he lost. And Marianne's like trying to see the bright side. She goes, well, well, it was a lot easier to see Larry's fortune without all those other horses around. <laughs> Larry him. goes, I lost. <laughs> I lost. And Jennifer just goes, I guess this is a bad time to tell you where I wanted to go for our honeymoon. Oh, he lost big, he says. Then we cut to the staples, and there's you see the horse there, presumably this is Larry's fortune. And there's a man like looking after him, and the guy, as the cousins walk in, steps to the side behind the horse. So they into don't see the him stable into with the, the horse stall. and behind. So the guys didn't see him walk in. Uh, and they go see cousin Larry's fortune, they give him some apples. And Bucky tells him how proud he is of him, that he was so polite in that race. You didn't push and shove your way ahead of others. He's he's <laughs> rewarding him for his gentle, calm behavior. Larry, of course, wants the opposite reaction uh, and yells at him. and goes, what is wrong with you? Couldn't you have just picked up the pace a little bit? He tells him they delayed the start of the next race because of how slow he was. Oh, boy. And Balky calls out Larry for being really hung up on the winning, losing thing. And then out of nowhere, so randomly, Balky goes into that California voice again. And he goes, can't you just experience the totality of the positive space we're in? It's so random. But like, why? Uh, yeah, it's a very why random just, thing to say. I guess that. like those words are like hippy dippy words. Yeah, it's like new so agey advice, right? So he's doing That's the California, California voice. Yeah. When suddenly we hear a voice go, excuse me. And Belky turns and looks at the horse and goes, oh, my God, he can talk. He goes, this could be a whole new career for him. Do you do impressions? He asks Larry's fortune. And the voice <laughs> says, I'm Dr. Tierney. Belky goes, he does Dr. Tierney. Who's Dr. Tierney? And then the doctor, the man we saw earlier, steps out of the stall. So now we can see him. And he goes, I'm Dr. Tierney. Belky goes, you should hear him, do you? Pointing at the <laughs> horse. It's just a kind of funny exchange, the yeah. whole thing. He does Dr. Tierney. Anyways, this doctor's checking in the horse. I hope everything's okay. And he introduces himself. Uh, Larry introduces himself, and he says, this is my co-owner, Balky. And Dr. Tierney ex- introduces himself as the track veterinarian. <laughs> and Balky says, you know, I don't need a... This is a classic gag, actually, <laughs> these three words. He says, you know, I don't actually eat a whole lot of red meat myself. 
And Larry's like, not vegetarian, veterinarian. And Balky does that thing where he looks at his mouth as he goes the second time, veterinarian. And Balky says, oh, I'm sorry, which war? <laughs> and Larry, because he's thinking veteran. And then Larry just goes, horse doctor. He's horse a horse doctor. doctor. I, th- I think they've done this before. We've yeah, gone vet, from vegetarian, veterinarian, veteran. Vegetarian. Yeah, it? we've done that before. Yeah. That three. Yeah. I can't remember when, but I remember yeah. them going, oh, that was clever. Well, they did it again. Yeah. Uh, this doctor also has a strange accent as he. Very strange tells accent. Tells them that he's. It's, like, it's almost like a British actor poorly trying to sound american oh, but they're usually good at they're american usually accents. good but or maybe the other way around anyways maybe. he tells him he's uh examining the horse and he's suffering from something called Wright's syndrome which is a lung disorder there's no known cure he tells them the only thing they could do uh, is put him to sleep oh my god and uh, balky walks over and hugs the horse oh my god you know, there's so many reasons they just kill horses. This last season, did you read about that in the news? This last uh, derby, the derby, they Once there the were like wins. seven horses or something that they put down during the like oh at the God. at the place. Yeah, and now there's some investigation. I think about like why so many horses. There's a to, similar thing happens to they like twist an ankle and they got to yeah, get killed that's for it. it. Yeah, they no, they won't like rehab them because they're not, they're not worth the money that you pay for. Oh my gosh. Same thing happens terrible. with uh, greyhound dogs after yeah. their race. They're usually, instead of giving a home, they're just like get rid of them, which is sad after their works. But anyways, the doctor goes, look, I can take care of this in the morning and he leaves. This Dr. Tierney was played by actor William Dennis who uh, had a couple of recurring characters in Newhart, just the 10 of us. Hmm. He was also in an episode of Star Trek Next Generation. Did he have that weird accent in all of he those probably shows? did. Okay. <laughs> so that's sad. So the doctor walks away and, you know, they just been told they have to put this horse down. And we cut to, like, in the middle of the night or something. And we're back in their apartment, Larry and Balky's apartment. And Larry is in his pajamas. We see him come out of his bedroom, like, still half asleep. It's dark in the apartment. And he goes to the kitchen. Uh, and he turns on the living room light, like on his way to the kitchen. And when he does that, we and the audience can see that the horse, Larry's fortune, the entire horse, There's a horse is standing in the apartment next to the counter. The whole There's horse is there. Horse Do you remember a few episodes ago? Room. Do you remember like three, four episodes ago when we started this season and I said, this I think this set looks bigger. The apartment looks bigger, like oh, more space there. No, they were doing the horse bit, I guess. Maybe they're like, we're so going to need room for a now horse. It, I'm certain that this is a bigger set, apartment set than last season because there's an entire horse there and like so much space. Like it takes him forever to walk across the living room. Yes, and the, the sofa is different. We'll talk about that yeah. in a second. But this is a great bit where he just gets water and he takes a sip and he looks over and he looks at the horse, doesn't react. He goes back, takes another sip, and then does a perfectly timed spit it take takes. as he's bug eye Larry. He realized there is a horse in the apartment. How did they get it up there? How did they get it up the stairs? Did it fit through the door? This is a and it's a it re- wouldn't have fit through that door. There's a real animal in the apartment. Oh my yeah, god! Yeah, they and have a real horse on fade set. Fade to a giant commercial. Set. That is the end of Act One. Listener, join this conversation and meet other Perfect Strangers fans. We have a fun Facebook group. There's a link in the episode description. I post a thread ahead of time of the episodes we're going to record, and you can watch along on freebie. Leave your comments, questions, observations. And uh, we'll use them at the end of the show. Horse expertise. And any horse expertise. Because this is a real horse they're using in this episode. It's amazing. Okay, Act 2, sister. There's a horse in the apartment. We pick up right where we left off. Larry is furious. He's pounding on. It's still dark. It's middle of the night, presumably. He's pounding on Balky's bedroom door saying, Balky, Balky, get out of here right now. And then just then the front door to the apartment opens and Balky's not even in his bedroom because he comes in from the hallway and he's like, cousin, what are you yelling about? (laughs) He hasn't even been there. He just came back with like uh, some bags and stuff. And Larry goes, Balky, what is that horse doing in our apartment? And when he said that, all I could think of is John Mulaney's horse. And there's a horse in a hospital bit, (laughs) which he which was a metaphor for the for the Trump presidency. Um, oh, anyway, look that. it up. It's I, really I've funny. Never heard he that. describes it like 
it's like there's a horse in a hospital. Oh. And the horse and everyone's like, how did the horse get there? I don't know. <laughs> 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 What's the horse going to do next? The horse we the don't apartment. know because there's never been a horse in the hospital before. <laughs> and they're like, why don't we get someone to come get the horse because the horse fired all those people? <laughs> <laughs> It's a pretty good analogy. Yeah, it's really funny. But anyway, back to Larry, who says, Balky, what is the horse doing in our apartment? And then Balky just looks at him and he goes, what horse? What horse? And he's like, Balky. <laughs> <laughs> and Balky's like got this bag of stuff um, and he carries it over to the kitchen. And Larry follows him saying, this is crazy. You cannot keep a horse in an apartment. And Balky starts begging him, please, I, it's the only way I can cure him. Please say yes. And Larry reminds him that Dr. Tierney said that there's no cure. No known cure. And Balky says, no, he said no known cure. Oh. And he just wants to try an old remedy from Mepos that works on sheep. Oh. And you can use what's left over to weatherproof your hen house. Oh, I'm in. And then he pulls out this bag of of. Organ meat parts, meat. Yes. and he goes. Can you believe they're getting eight ninety five a pound for yak tail? Eight ninety five is expensive <laughs> for yak tail. Yak tail. What else is in this meposian cure? And Larry's like, the horse can't stay here. And Balky says, I just need forty eight hours to see if the cure will work. Larry again says, Balky, he's a horse. You don't keep a horse in an apartment. And then he goes, how could I possibly lose this argument? <laughs> he's like, what is happening like, what is right happening? now? There's a horse in the apartment. And then uh, Balky cleverly tries to work up the guilt. He goes, you want to tell the horse? You tell him yourself. And he grabs the horse and walks it over and puts him right next to Larry's head. He goes, come here, Larry's fortune. He goes, now you look this gifted horse in the mouth and tell him there's no room at the end. Of course, he meant the saying gift is, horse. You, you don't look a gift don't look horse. A gift, and he called, face, a, he called him yeah. a gifted horse. And he goes, come on, Larry, Larry's fortune. Give Larry, cousin Larry, a kiss. And the horse like opens his mouth to show like, his teeth or yeah, something. Doesn't stick his tongue out. It's so funny. Thing. And then th this is it. it. It does the job. Larry caves. It softens Larry right up. A little horse kiss. He goes, you could keep cousin Larry and Larry's fortune in the apartment, but just for 48 hours. Bucky says, thank you. And Larry goes, I don't understand how I could have lost this argument as he turns and goes yeah. back to the bedroom. Yes, I don't know how you lost <laughs> that one, too, but. We cut to a couple days later and we're in the apartment. The camera zooms out. And what did you say about the couch looking different? Oh, my God. This is, this is the funniest visual. What do we see? We see Balky and the horse sitting on the sofa the next to each like other. The horse is like on its but the horse's butt is sitting on this and sofa. And the sofa is the same pattern it's sofa as they've always up. had, but it's huge. It's like a giant sofa to fit this horse. Because and Balky's sitting next to him and his feet aren't even touching the ground. His feet are dangling. So they've reinforced the sofa and raised it so the horse big. didn't have to sit they as just far down. They bigified this yes. sofa. It's, remember we talking about giant furniture in that one episode? Yeah. They kind of did that to the sofa yeah. just for regular it's like the sofa hit a Super Mario Brothers mushroom and just it went bloop, 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 bloop. and got bigger. Interestingly enough, this is the last episode we're going to see this specific purple pattern. Oh. Ouch. Oh, that's sad. Uh, you know, you would think the horse sitting on it would have wrecked it and that was it. But in actuality, this was the second episode filmed for the season. And this and that episode, New Kid on the Block and The Breakup, were filmed after this episode, mm. which also featured the couch. So it wasn't the last episode that was filmed with the couch. It's the last mm. episode airing with this couch. Got it. Which is weird. I don't know why, but we're going to see another couch <laughs> next week. Pay attention. There's also a giant uh, rug in front of the couch where the yeah. coffee table was. Yeah. This is a really big apartment. I'm just. There's uh, so much reiterate. room in this yeah. living room There's now. The horse. set is much bigger. A horse sitting on a couch next yeah. to Balky, and Balky's holding a bucket with a oversized straw in it. And Balky's like, um, kind of lecturing the horse. He's like, "This is it, huh? You're just gonna sit there not taking your medicine? I work my fingers to the bone, chopping and grating, not to mention pureeing, 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 <laughs> and this is the thanks I get." He said, "I want you to know you're putting a knife in my heart." <laughs> and he's like, "Just try it." He's trying to get this horse to like drink from this straw. He's like, come on, just try it. I ground the buzzard bones extra fine. Oh, come buzzard on. bones. So we have another, yak tail, yeah, buzzard bones. Yeah. 
And another important ingredient we'll get to later. And then he calls to the bedroom to Larry saying, I need your help. And Larry comes out and he's complaining already. He's like, Becky, I did it twice yesterday oh and once this morning. Oh boy, what did he Please do? Please don't make me do it again. What is he talking about? And Becky says, okay, you don't want cousin Larry's fortune to get better? And Larry says he does. Well, then you have to do your part. So then Larry just sighs and he takes the bucket and he prepares to do whatever it is he's going to do. And Becky says, don't kink the straw like you did last time. <laughs> like bend it. Yeah. yeah. Larry's like, don't push me. And what does he do? He pretends, you know, like you do with a baby who yeah. won't eat their food or take mm. their medicine. You go, mm, this is yummy. And he's like trying not to throw up in the yeah. thing. Uh, he's like, can I have all of this? And Belkin's like, no, Cousin Larry, you have to share my Cousin Larry's fortune. And they pretend to fight over and, the bucket. And But before he started his whole act, he's like stirred around the thing, the, whatever's in the bucket with the straw. And yes. Then he, and then he pulls out this like uh, green, green leafy, like, stem leafy garnish, yes, presumably, yes. and tosses and it outside, it, just throws just it the into ground. the room, yeah. into this massive, endless yeah. like living it, room space was. now. And uh, and then Larry's like, no, no, I want to drink it. And he's like, well, OK, fine, if I have to give it up. And so then they hold up the bucket to the horse's mouth and the horse puts his mouth around the straw. Yeah, like, do horses know how to I, drink out of I don't know. Straws? At first, it looked like the horse was just they were cheating the straw behind the horse's mouth to make it look like it. But then later you notice like the straw is in the horse's mouth. So it works. And Larry's fortune starts to drink his medicine. When there is a knock at the door and it Larry answers and it's Jennifer and Marianne. And presumably they've already met this horse. Yeah. They're good friends with the horse. They came they in to see in. the horse. So excited to see the They're horse. like, hi, Fortune. Hi, Fortune. And um, they have, they're each carrying things in their hands. And we find out that Marianne, uh, well, they find out that Marianne's carrying a carrot cake that yes. they baked they bake for the horse. Cake. Yes. And she goes, Balky, does he like carrot cake? And Balky says, does he like carrot cake? Does a chicken have hips? <laughs> does a chicken have hips? <laughs> and he said, sure. I even planted carrots in the window box. They should be up by spring. And then Jennifer is like, look what I got for you, Fortune. And she puts this blanket, a red burgundy blanket over him and in, embroidered on the side. It says Larry's Fortune. It's very nice, actually. She made the horse a blanket. Does it say Larry's S apostrophe? It says, yeah, it says uh, there is something. Yes, it says Larry's apostrophe fortune, meaning. Yeah, L-A-R-R-Y-S apostrophe, apostrophe. meaning Not, the fortune belongs to all the Larry's. The Larry's is his Larry's is his fortune. fortune. I don't know why it says that. It's kind of weird. That's a good point. Instead why didn't they possess of Larry's? Yeah, I don't know. The apostrophe is in the wrong place on the blanket. And Marianne goes to get some plates to cut up the carrot cake and serve it up. And then um, Balky says, aren't you a lucky horse? And Red from the blanket, Red really brings up the highlights in your mane. Mm. And Marianne's like, yeah, we thought it'd come in handy this winter. You know how drafty it gets in here. <laughs> and they're all yes. like, yeah, 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 yeah. And then Larry's the only one who's like, carrots in the spring, a blanket for the winter. What is going on here? Have you people lost your minds? <laughs> Am I the only one who sees a problem with having a horse in the apartment? The rest of them were just planning to yes. have this horse for the for rest of the year. Indefinitely. Yeah, that's their horse now. Jennifer tries to get Larry to calm down. Uh, Balky says he is feeling better. He feels better today than he did yesterday. Marion goes, I think it was the bubble bath we gave him. Ooh. They gave the horse a bubble bath the other day. They're just trying to make the horse feel comfortable. And Larry agrees. He goes, well, look, maybe he is getting better. He seems to have a little more color. Uh, and then Marianne's pe passing out the carrot cakes. And Balky's like, oh, no, 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 no. Before you get dessert, you're going to have to have a little more meat post therapy. And Larry's like, oh, boy, I got to do this again. Yeah. Uh, and this time, uh, Balky picks up this giant, like, copper jug yeah. that's sitting there and pours all this, like, brown liquid like that brown, has yellow chunks liquid. of things yeah, gross. in it. And again, he stirs it up with a straw. And again, uh, Larry grabs it. And again, Larry stirs it, reaches in, pulls out a green leafy thing, just discards it to the side. The garnish. Yeah, the garnish. And he get, again, he starts to go, oh, mm, and pretend to drink it. Only this time, he drinks a little bit of it on accident. Ugh, and, and he starts, starts gagging gag. and yeah. coughing. <laughs> he sucks too hard on that one. And the scene ends, and we quickly go to the next scene, which is like, I don't know, a day or so later. 
And Larry enters excitedly into the apartment. He's like, Bucky, it's almost time for Mr. Ed. I'll get the popcorn. Oh, that's cute. You get the, as if they've like, he's gotten they, used to having this yeah, horse. He loves they're doing all gonna watch horse Mr. activities. Mr. Ed together. But his excitement stops pretty quickly because on his way to the kitchen, he sees Balky kneeling on the floor in front of the sofa. And in front of Balky is the entire horse on its side. Larry's, uh, this, Larry's how big is this fortune apartment? Lying, Larry's fortune laying is down lying on the living room. An adult horse, laying. giant horse is laying down. There's enough room for this in this apartment. It's kind of crazy. How did they get the horse to lie down? That's not easy. It's and stay a down. big apartment. It's a big horse, too. Mm-hmm. And uh, Larry is concerned. We start to see concern from Larry. And he goes, is he uh, taking a little nap? He asks Balky. And then Balky has a serious tone. He goes, cousin, we have to talk. And he takes him to the dining room table. He tells him Larry's fortune has taken a turn for the worst. He's been lying down all morning. He said if the medicine was going to work, he'd be on his feet by now. And Larry's like, well, give him more medicine. Larry's down like, Larry's oh, into this. this all turning. into the horse now. Yeah. Uh, he goes, I think he was really starting to like the buzzard bones. He goes, I know I was. After that. <laughs> so he got a taste for buzzard bones. And he grabs the bucket and he walks over there uh, and they kneel down and Larry's like, okay, here, here, uh, Larry's fortune. But again, before he does, he's like, he yum, takes good medicine. He, he stirs it and he takes a piece of parsley. And this time and Balky notices. And this time Balky notices. He says, what are you doing? And Larry says, just taking off the parsley. And Balky says, are you out of your mind? He says, Balky, I don't like parsley. And fortune won't miss the decorative touch. Oh my God. And that's where the bake breakdown happened because Balky says it's not a decorative touch. It's the secret power ingredient. It flushes toxin out of the pancreas, toxins out of the pancreas and, and it freshens the breath. And Larry's like, Oh no, I've taken the parsley off every time. <laughs> and then they both look at each other and they're like, Parsley! parsley. So first and they of all, run that, to the kitchen. That's accurate, right? It does flush toxins out of the pancreas. I think so, yeah. And it does freshen the breath. And stupid Larry just thinking about his own taste. Like the horse cares. You're gonna he risk thought the it was garnish life. or something. Yeah, an idiot though. But it's a meposian cure, Larry. You should know better yeah, than the pulpit. Especially four especially years in. Especially crafted. Six this, years in. These ingredients all matter. What are you doing? This is all your fault. So they both run parsley. to the kitchen to grab hands full of parsley. And Balky brings one over to the horse lying down and the horse eats it. And then, and then they both like are like waiting and standing over the horse, seeing for something to happen. Larry's like, nothing's happening. And Balky says, wait, hold on a minute. And he's like, like following him with following with his hands over the horse's body. He's like, it's gliding down his elementary canal. (laughs) It's, it's energizing his lungs. Freshening his breath, it's shimmering, shimmying through his it stomach, is a shimmy. <laughs> and it should be hitting his pancreas now. And they're both like standing there, it's just quiet. It's they're a long pause, they're, like waiting if anything happens, nothing but the, happens. nothing happens. The horse stays laying down. Nothing. And Balky says, "I guess we waited a, too long." Oh no! They both walk over to the counter. They're both sad. Now we have uh, Balky on the left side of the counter with his back to Larry's fortune. And with some parsley, some parsley sprigs hanging out of his pocket. Hanging out of his pocket. And Larry is on the other side of the co- corner facing Larry's fortune. And you notice Larry reacts to something while Balky's head is down. Yeah. His hands. And, his, and his Larry's face goes from looking downward to upward to off screen. And then we zoom out again and we see that Larry's fortune is standing up on you see his Larry's legs fortune again. enter the screen going for the feet. parsley in Balky's, Balky's pocket. pocket. And Balky is excited and says, Cousin Larry's fortune, you're cured, you're, you're cured. cured. Cousin, we did it. We saved him. He, he, that's horse made no noise standing up. That's a bit that makes a little Wait, bit of a clunky. There had to have been a cut there somewhere because off screen, they had to get the horse from. Well, they had to stop down. filming and right. get the horse up, and but then continue. Where is the cut? No, when they walk the over, edit. there is an edit. When they walk over to the counter, it's a two shot. It's a, it's a two different shots, oh, and okay. then there's a third wide shot. Okay, so no, really easy to do, yeah. but you would have to stop. You'd be like, okay, pause, everyone, and get the horse person out there. So we get this horse up, and they're like, okay, reset, ready. It must be noisy. It's Let's a huge go. horse. Yes, too. that horse would have made a lot of noise. The horse is on his feet. They it's did cured. it. They saved, they, they saved the horse. 
And so then we go to some days later and we're back at the racetrack. Oh, we're back at Arlington Racetrack. And Larry and Je- Larry sitting next to Jennifer. He's just dressed in a nice suit this yes. time. Nothing crazy. No ascot, yeah, no, no fedora. Ascot. And he's, and Jennifer says, I think it's very nice that the new owners are going to race Larry's fortune oh, again. He oh, sold so he sold. The horse. Why would he sell the horse after it was cured? I guess he didn't want to take a risk anymore in owning this sick horse. After that first outing, the, yeah, the horse yeah. was almost died and it was slow. I guess that makes sense. And Larry's like, well, okay, it's not, it's a nice gesture that they're raising him again, but maybe not very smart. And he tells Jennifer that Fortune's new owners gave him $2,000 for a horse that's the longest shot in the race. Look at that. Um, and he looks at the, the, I guess there's like a board with the odds. Yeah. And he says, Fortune's going off at 99 to 1. Yeah, it's a long shot. That's a long shot. And uh, Jennifer says it's a lot better to come to him with the track when he's calm and when their honeymoon's not. Excellent. Yeah, Larry, don't bet your honeymoon money. What are you doing? They still lost out because it was $2,200. You lost $200. And you sold yeah. it for 2000 Yeah, true. So you just lost $200. Yeah. Well, 100 because Bal- half of it was. Oh, bad. that's right. Jennifer says he's calm. It's nice. And he says, I'm just here to spend a nice afternoon at the races. And they kiss. And then the announcer starts the race. And Larry, uh, Balky and Marianne come down the stairs. They don't know. They don't start the race yet. Balky and Marianne come first. And they kind of trot down the stairs. And then, like, kids both, like, jump in their seats. It's adorable. They look at each other. (laughs) And then Marianne says, I can't wait to see Cousin Larry's horse race again. Uh, we saw him in the paddock. He looked really frisky, she says. Belky says, well, that's one of the side effects of the cure. And, he, and Belky gets up at the railing, and Larry hears this and goes, side effects? What are you talking about, side effects of the cure? Well, Balky tells him the cure makes them frisky. It also puts a beautiful shine on their coats, makes them run like the wind. Whoa. Sometimes it gives them the hiccups. Larry's like, what? He's like, oh, don't worry. You could just make them breathe into a paper bag and the hiccups go away. And Larry's like, no. What was that run like the wind thing? And Balky says that when they give that same cure to the sheep, the sheep run so fast that the sheep dogs can't keep up with them. Oh, boy. And Larry's again. Now he's thinking about money again. He's like, why didn't you say something? And Balky's like, well, you never showed any interest in sheep. (laughs) Belgi has just created a super horse, allegedly, yes. with his crazy. Mip- this is like cheat. This is like PEDs. That horse would be disqualified. And then but Larry's like, it. maybe I can still get a bed in. And he starts to run out of the he stands. Climbs over the stands and tries but to get off. Before then, yeah. he can get out of the stands, the announcer starts the race. Goes, and, and they're, they're off. off. Yeah. And Larry's like, no, no. How can they be off when I've got a 99 to 1 sure thing? When when I can't get a bet down, why does this always happen why to me? Why does this always happen to Larry? And then Belkin goes, cool, your Jetsons. I like that Jetsons. reference. To the Jetsons. <laughs> he goes, I bet enough for the both of us. And then Larry goes, you did. And he gets excited. He, he gets goes, God, so crazy. Now he's into it. He's like, God bless you. Come on, Fortune. Come on. Oh, we didn't even mention like gambling Larry is back. Yes, like, it's not gambling a good Larry. Remember? Yeah, remember he had a problem? Larry was not supposed to gamble. Again, yeah, yes. several times he said he's uh, sworn it off. But, you know, a vice is a vice. Uh, course, and now he he's gets excited. He turns to Jennifer. He goes, Jennifer, we are going to Paris. <laughs> and then he gives, gives her a big, big kiss. kiss. He says, Balky, thank you. Thank you. And he kisses Balky on the side of the yeah. face. Balky turns to Marianne, who like does that whole grab and bend back. Rolls him kiss. back yeah. and pulls him back up. And then he goes, wow. wow. <laughs> uh-huh. And so they're all cheering for the horse. And we see the race footage again. And Larry's fortune wins just barely. And Larry's going crazy like, yes, Balky, I don't know how to thank you. You've made us rich. And he's squeezing him around the like middle and just jumping up and down. And he's like, how much did you bet? A hundred? Two hundred? He's like so frantic. And Balky's like, well, no. And he's like, three hundred? You bet three hundred dollars? That means we won thirty thousand. He squeezed. Thirty thousand yeah, dollars and lifts him off Balky the ground a thousand. thousand. Yeah. And then he, Balky's like, not quite that much. And he's like, oh, that's okay. What'd you bet? A hundred? That means we won ten thousand dollars and squeezes, squeezes him again. <laughs> uh, still enough. And then he looks at Jennifer. He's like, still enough for a darn nice trip. Yes, it is. 
And Marianne's trying to soften things by saying, well, I think the important thing is that Fortune won, because I think she knows how much Bucky bet. And Larry's like, well, it's one of the important things. Ah. He's like, Balky, how much did you bet? And then Balky just goes, two bucks, two bucks, all on the nose, right on the nose. Two. Oh, two dollars. Larry's like, two dollars. And Jennifer tells them, Larry, you won two hundred dollars. Larry's just like, yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Balky goes, hey, that's just enough to repair the hoof damage to the bathtub. Oh, my gosh. And they give him the bubble bet. Larry's bubble like, bet. he only bet two dollars. And he's starting to cry again, and he turns to Jennifer for this a is hug. Pretty funny. And Jennifer just grabs him by the shoulders and spins him back around. To sends him back to sends Balky. Him back she to Balky. doesn't even want to deal with crying, whiny Larry. And Larry's. then roll credits. There's no lesson learned here. Just that, like, never mess with a Maposian. Always trust cure. the Maposian cure. No, there's no lesson. There's no lesson. There's he doesn't say, le- like, I got crazy again with gambling. I should this. I should that. Like, and there's so many unanswered questions. Like, how, why did he even buy the horse? How was he so sure in the first place that this discount horse he bought would be a winner? And then, I don't know. Yeah, before we get further into this, there's not much more. But uh, mm-hmm. listener, check out our tea public shop, danceofjoy.com slash shop. Pick up a sweatshirt, a hoodie, a coffee mug, a cell phone case. With the logo, take a picture, send it to us. We want to see it. Uh, yeah, so uh, Larry's uh, Larry's fortune was played by Don the Horse. Don the Horse. Trained by Lancaster Lane Ranch and uh, had some other credits to his name. So he was a good horse. He was in he was other a good horse actor. shows and commercials. Yeah, this whole episode seemed kind of random. It was really out of nowhere random. Uh, like, there was no background to these characters that explained. No. I mean, I guess Larry had, but they didn't even talk about his past. Ga- if they had referenced his past gambling addictions, that would have even made more sense about. Well, then you're not supposed to gamble on a horse. Bought this horse, but he saw a deal and took it, and he grabbed a but horse. But there by was the no link between the deal and like why he thought this horse would win. <laughs> no, there wasn't. You know, there was <coughs> nothing explained. Yes, lots of inexplicable things and, and questions raised. And there wasn't raised, even physical and, comedy. Uh, so, like, why did they just write this around? The inclusion of a horse, like, did they just get the actor? They're like, we have a horse for you or, for yeah, next week. And Can you write, like, something write a about story it? for a I horse? did think some of it was emotional when they had to put him to sleep. And I love the turn, yeah. Larry's turn of like being into it yeah, and caring and for Larry's fortune into the horse. Ultimately, like, there, yeah, but there weren't that, that many great, that's like, about it. there wasn't that much good wordplay, there wasn't any physical comedy. So, I don't know, it was just like a random episode about a horse. About a horse, what did our listeners and that, think? And a like super giant cure. apartment set. <laughs> really, if Larry was smart, he would bottle that Maposian liquid and buy another horse and feed it and yeah. and, and oh. win money. Like, I don't know what he was thinking. That would be a better episode. They cure one horse and they're like, we can make a business and, then, and like, sell this and get rich off They have a horse office. empire. Yeah. Oh my and God. then they, they take the bets, control the bets. It yeah. was right there in front of you, Larry, and you let it go. And I'm sure this cure is never going to get bought up ever again. What did our listeners think? What did our think? listeners think? Uh, let's start with Nicole Stoner. Cousin Nicole said, knowing how much Balky cares about animals in general throughout the series, this makes him, Bronson, petting the horse in the opening credits more wholesome. Mm. Oh, yeah. In the opening credits, he pets mm. that horse in the Police carriage. Horse. She says, or the, a horse carriage. Yes. The, she says, the can't touch this moment is my favorite cousin song and dance moment in the whole series. Yeah, it's a pretty good one. Larry's neutral facial expression throughout the bit screams, this is normal. <laughs> I think it's one of the better ones. It's, it's one a very good ones. one. Absolutely. It's up there. Top five. Uh, and then she asks, isn't horse racing considered a sport? Didn't Larry vow never to make sports bets ever again after everyone in the pool? Yes. Yes, he did. That was the football? Yes. The football yeah. league. Fantasy league, right? Not a real pool? Something like that. Okay. Cause all valid points. Yes. <laughs> Listener cousin Pam Hitchcock writes, ay, ay, ay. Here we have Larry running off half cracked again. Did he not realize the cost of owning a racehorse, stable fees, yeah, groomers, yeah, trainers, vets. Yeah, it's expensive. Larry, who takes calculators to store? Yeah. Larry, who takes calculators to stores to figure out the best food deals. And Larry, <laughs> who poured over one ads for weeks to find Balky a car. Larry, who you would have probably have to pull his wallet out of his cold, dead hands. Yeah, that's This Larry. is a very valid point. Boys. They that's just Larry. like disregarded every like back character background yeah. that they well, gave look, Larry. He's, he's buying stereo chairs and expensive security. Yes. Maybe he's listened up. Maybe, now. Maybe in he's... his 
in he's his thirties. So yeah, he's like you know he's what? A different Let's layer. spend some of this money. He's a man of the nineties. He now. is a man of the nineties. That's true. And she also writes, "How do the neighbors not hear or see all these shenanigans?" Yeah, I would complain. What How are those do they get the noises? horse up into the apartment? I'm just imagining the them stairs. getting it through the doorway and up the stairs and around. Like what? Okay. And she hilarious. even writes, "How was the horse transported yes, from the know. stables to the apartment?" You know, you know what? You can lift him in through the window. Now that there's no fire. But did he just like ride the horse from Arlington I, Heights I back know. to Chicago? No. That's far, but yeah. not far if you're on a horse, maybe. Yeah. Uh, she writes, the horse sitting on the couch was a funny sight gag, and I always love the dancing and singing duets. Marianne looked adorable in her Kentucky Derby <laughs> outfit. And this is important. She writes, I can suspend disbelief for a good episode, but not this not one. This one. Oh. Some good balkyisms and hammer time saved this episode from being a real stinker. Nine out of ten Baba Nine stickies. out of ten it's Baba, Baba Stickies. Yeah, you don't want Baba, you want low Baba Stickies. I mean, the, the you can't touch this is like, that's like the that's best the part. That's the only thing, that's but that had nothing episode. to no, do. It is easily the best part of the whole with episode. With the horse. Though. And we also yeah. had like a random California accent line. Yeah, that was weird. It's weird. Uh, cousin Whitney Smith says, I thought Larry learned his lesson in season five episode, Everybody in the Pool. Wait, let me go further back than that. Season two episode, Babes in Babylon, a.k.a. the Vegas, Vegas. episode <laughs> with gambling. Yeah, you're right. Guess not. Another episode I didn't like at all. I didn't get the point of why Larry bought this horse. What was the purpose? Was it because the horse's name was Larry's Fortune? Sure. Even though I didn't really care for this episode, I really get it. When Larry Fortune took a turn for the worse and he was laying on his side, did tug at my heartstrings. Also, these guys have really done a number to this apartment they have lived in. They've had dogs, cows, and now a horse. It's a wonder they're still able to stay there. Bucky should really feel like he's on Meepos with all these animals they've had in his apartment. Another again, another episode of Balky not wearing his infamous vest. Yeah, the Thomas vests Thinky. are kind of gone. The vests man. are gone. He's got embroidered shirts and a poofy and like nineties eighties shoulder patch jacket. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, those are all. They've had a lot of animals in this apartment. It must smell. I can't imagine. And here comes John, cousin, you know listener. How much horses poop? Also, what are oh you yeah, doing where, and then it would stink up the oh, whole what are you building. Doing with these with giant poops. It would be a giant Anyways. poop. That's another thing I learned uh, reporting on those uh -huh. horse farms. How you always. Look down when you're walking oh, yeah, around yeah, on the horse step farm. In. You gotta step in it. Step in you gotta step in it. Okay, and finally we have listener cousin John Adama. Oh boy, I can't wait. Who <laughs> always gives us uh, some good insight. Cousin John writes, well, we are officially in the deepest depths of sitcom tropes here. <laughs> A horse in the house. Why not? We haven't seen that since <laughs> Lucy, Laverne and Shirley, yeah. the monkeys, the Beverly Hillbillies, yeah, yeah. dot, dot, dot. Yeah. Now I know there is nothing new under the sun and I'm perfectly happy to watch different takes on some classics, just like listening to someone cover a song to make it their own. Yeah. But this, this was closer to average karaoke. Oh, okay. <laughs> More importantly, this is the first time I've seen the shift that we are dreading. Larry, the man with a gambling problem, buys a horse with Balky that turns out to be ill. So where's the conflict? It's between Larry and Jennifer. And for what may be the first time, her antagonism is realistic <laughs> and warranted. It is. What about the gambling? What about Balky's money? Did yeah. Larry learn his lesson about being responsible nope. for the relationship? Nope. nope. Here's a horse. Have some laughs. Roll credits. <laughs> That's kind of what we're saying. Yeah. Like it's, and he writes, while it's far from bad, I'm worried that my shoe. Show, I think show. That my show about it. Okay. And he writes, while it's far from bad, I'm worried that my show about an immigrant and neurotic navigating the world and each other will soon instead be about two guys and their significant others. Mm. It could be funny. It could open up a ton of new possibilities, but it can also be alienating to fans. C plus. That's yeah, very I see, fair. I see where he's coming from, and he's right. And you know, when the show goes C long, plus. Uh, and they I try to change things. We're in for. Come on, there's got to be a gem. There's a two parter. There's got to be up. some gems, but we got I the feel MC like Hammer. we're entering this phase of. There's Balky B coming up. We'll trying to some keep point, this some, show some alive. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we will still enjoy. Don't say ridiculous. Not said at all. Of course, I have. Don't be ridiculous. Yeah, <laughs> there are still joyful moments like the yeah, MC Hammer yeah, dance yeah. was amazing in this yeah, episode, but yeah. the rest of the episode was like, meh. <laughs> we still don't see actual Dimitri, yeah, but that photo framed photo of Dimitri is still around on That's the kitchen correct. counter. Maybe Dimitri's gone on a long trip or something and they have his picture up to keep them company in the meantime. Yeah. 
I hope it doesn't mean something happened to Dimitri. I hope Dimitri's okay. Yeah. We'll we'll keep looking for him. Okay, now we're at Perfect Strangers Today or PS Today, which is the part of our show where we talk about could we do this horse episode today? Well, Does it hold up? Does it make sense? What do you think? Let's see. Uh, it's essentially like a get rich quick scheme kind of thing by gambling problem. But the person has a gambling problem. Like you have to be sensitive to that. Well, they couldn't use Arlington racetrack anymore because they can't use the racetrack exist. just because now it's done. But could they still buy a horse? Is that does anybody still? I mean, the, they like still they race get horses. a cheap deal on yeah. You get cheap yeah, deal. I think you could. I There's mean, still horse racing. It was a trope on those early sitcoms is yeah. it could we bring back the trope of the oh, a horse and a if house you could do a fresh take on a, and you just gotta get to a in horse the in the house yeah like taking care of a horse but it is very very expensive and uh yeah i don't know i don't know i don't know i guess you could do it it would be just as random and weird be like okay and buy a horse what what, what else do they race? what song Greyhounds? would they um choreograph a dance to oh so if it was now and it was it'd be, well you'd be like gangnam style or something even though like, that's, like Lizzo. Really old. Oh, you could do Lizzo. Yeah. You could do like some, it'd be like all TikTok dances yeah. and stuff. Yeah. It like would Bucky's be. constantly filming TikTok TikToks, dances. TikToks, yeah. Um, but the, the Gangnam style, even that's old now. That's yeah, the last that's bit. Very old. You could do Macarena. Did they already have a Macarena joke? I don't know. That was also no. a big uh, But like as a hip hop fan, like I think, I remember when I saw this, I was like, oh my God, hip hop's made it. Yeah, and I was like 13, 14 years old. <laughs> I was like, "Look, it's mainstream now." Yeah, and it, that song was so. Epic. Yeah, pretty, pretty decent. PS today, yeah, it's like mid level. It it's could, like mid level. It's a reach it if you tried to Just do it. Gotta again. get a horse and a house and, you and gotta, an apartment. Yeah, you got to be clever. With it. And you have to get make the supersized apartment set. Expa- ever expanding giant horse. horse. What else do they and race? Like a giant it's not good to couch. race things. Also, I feel yeah. bad for the owners. Greyhounds. Right, right, right. Yeah. No. He could buy it. Maybe he buys they a NASCAR. Race, maybe they buy a robot dog and oh. they race the robot dog. Or maybe dogs. they buy like a, it's like battle bots and they buy a robot battle bot thing. I don't know. That's like Black Mirror crossed yeah. with Perfect yeah, Strangers. Yeah. Some kind of AI battle arena. Anyways, join <laughs> us next week when there's going to be a feud and a Miposian duel. Oh, no. I can't wait to see what that looks like. That should be hilarious. In the meantime, you can support this show, listener, if you made you chuckle, if we made you remember your childhood. Uh, leave Your us a horse. <laughs> we, we, maybe you had a pony when you grow up. Hey, people had horses growing up. They were riding them. Uh, you can but there was a virtual tip. Buy us a virtual coffee on our website, dancejoypod.com. Uh, all proceeds go back into the show, and we thank everyone who has supported us. But you throw some rubles in there, you know. We 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 love it, and it helps keep the show going. In the meantime, we'd also love it if you could visit us at our website, danceofjoypod.com. From that website, you can find the links to everywhere you can listen to this podcast, everywhere you can like, le- like us, rate us, review us, leave a re- uh, subscribe to us. Uh, you can also press a button on the website main page and leave us a voice message. Tell us what you think about a horse in the apartment. How did that horse get there? What are your opinions, your theories? What's the best way to get a horse in the apartment, listener? Let us know. Step by step. Do you step take the freight elevator? That building doesn't know. have a freight elevator, but you would. You Whatever theories you have, you can also email them to us at danceofjoypod at gmail.com or let us know. Uh, find us on any of our social media accounts. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. That's all right on our website as well. But Imran, what is the most important thing our listeners should do? Always eat your parsley, even if it's garnish. Just oh, choke it it's down. It's good for the liver. It's good for the liver and the pancreas. The breath. Yes. Yeah. You will you will thank us later and you'll feel amazing. Now the most important thing is to share the show, listener, with your TV loving friends. Word of mouth your, goes a yes. long way. Anybody who loves eighties sitcoms and throwback stuff, share it, get it out there. We'd appreciate it. Thanks for listening to the Dance of Joy. That's our show for for now. Now we are so happy. Now we are so happy we do the dance of joy. Hey, 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 hey.